Well, with this Merlin, um, I always kind of describe it as a kind of a prequel to the legend that we're all aware of, what most of us are aware of. Um, and it's also a kind of a young take on the old legend. So Merlin at this stage in the story is only about 20. Um, he's just kind of discovering that he's he's different to other people. And, and I kind of see Merlin as a kind of a, he's like, kind of like a superhero in a way. Um, but in a kind of stealth fashion, like he saves the day quite often, but he can never take any of the credit really because, you know, he uses the wrong means. I play Guinevere, um, Gwen for short. I'm Guinevere, but most people call me Gwen. I'm the Lady Morgana's maid. Right. I'm Merlin. Mm. Hello, most people just call me idiot. And I work in the castle for uh, Lady Morgana. Um, and at this stage in the story, I'm a very kind of sweet, young, very kind and obliging girl, but also a little bit shy, but also I have a kind of an inner wisdom and a kind of a nobility that kind of I think will begin to emerge as the series goes on. On seeing Merlin, I fall for him, which is not something people necessarily recognise. I'm psychic. <laughs> no, you're not. It's true. All right, what am I thinking? That I'm not psychic. <laughs> you're strange. I, I, don't, I don't mean that in a nasty way. You're just funny. <laughs> I like that. Merlin doesn't know, I don't think, that Gwen likes him. Or if he does, he's so kind of nice that he wouldn't let on, you know, unless perhaps he liked her back. But at the moment, I think it's kind of unrequited. In these early episodes, it's kind of more about setting up the characters because obviously people will recognise the names of the characters, but at this stage, um, you know, perhaps their personalities are slightly different to how they're going to end up in the end. But there's, there's quite a lot of kind of references and nods towards um, where the story will eventually end up. The first time I come across Lancelot, I see him as um, this kind of very noble knight um, who's arrived in Camelot. And I think I kind of imagine that he's really out of my league. I don't think um, Gwen as a character has very high self-esteem. Um, she wouldn't think that anyone would be, you know, that especially someone like Lancelot would be interested in her. Camelot. Camelot needs knights. Not just Arthur and his kind, but ordinary people like you and me. But I'm not a knight yet, my lady. And I'm not a lady. Sorry, I... OK, we're done. Um... As the episode continues, you kind of see that there is a bit of a connection and he's quite open with his feelings towards her. So um, it's kind of left, it's left open at the end. Morgana's much more confident as a character and probably quite flirtatious. Um, and she kind of likes to encourage Gwen. They have a, a kind of a bubbling friendship. At this stage, it's quite kind of lady and, and mistress. So, you know, that I think will change as the series goes on. Um, but yeah, she kind of tries to encourage me, you know, kind of the odd wink or whatever, with, you know, when, Mar when Lancelot's around. Who is this man? Seems to have come out of nowhere. I know. It's been a bit of a surprise to all of us. When I found out that I had got the role of Gwen, I was hugely excited. It was so nice to be involved in from the beginning, you know, it's kind of, even at the read-through, you feel like you're kind of going on this real epic journey and it's so, it's fantastic to be part of it. Um, and when I read the scripts, I just thought the scripts were fantastic and I loved the role and just, I was just hugely excited, really, really pleased to be part of it. I'll show you no mercy. I am not a witch. I don't know how to stop the illness. If you will not undo your sorcery, you force my hand, and I must find you guilty. But I've told it you... It is I... therefore my duty to pronounce judgment. And under this circumstance, I have no choice but to sentence you to death. No. Uther is, um, he's kind of, he, he's, a, well, he's got, he's kind of got a dark side. He's very serious and... Um, extremely protective over over Camelot and over his son Arthur. I mean, working with Anthony, just having him around on set, he's lovely. He's got a lovely kind of fatherly quality about him because he's, he's kind of got kids our, our kind of age as well, two girls. And um, yeah, he's not, he's good for kind of advice and stuff like that. If you need to talk about stuff, he's like he's a good listener and he's a good laugh as well. We, we have a lot of fun on set. I mean, you know, they're long days, they're 12-hour days, and, you know, if you don't kind of, like, have a laugh, you end up getting quite down, and so everyone kind of looks after each other. And also, because it's such a kind of exciting project we're doing, I think everyone's kind of rooting for each other, which is really nice. I see Arthur as, um, he's kind of, at the beginning, he's quite up himself, and, you know, he thinks he's quite cool, and he knows he's the prince and he can do whatever he wants. 
Merlin kind of teaches him a lot about the real person, you know, the real person that he perhaps is and a sense of, of right and wrong. I want you to swear to me what you're telling me is true. I swear it's true. Kind of the reality of being noble, not just being, you know, thinking you're a prince or whatever and thinking that that's, that's enough. We've also got a great visiting cast. We've got um, Michelle Ryan, um, Julian Ryan Tut, Eve Miles, and Santiago Cabrera. Just people kind of come, who come in and out. I was looking down the cast list the other day, and I was like, "Wow, we've got a sterling cast. This is really good." <laughs> Working in the castle has been just great fun. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I never, it never ceases to amaze me how big it is. The putting the costumes on that helps with your character when you're kind of in amongst this, this huge um, castle. It kind of makes you feel like you re you're really there. I haven't had a huge amount of stunts to do yet, but there have been some, um, some quite exciting stuff for the boys so far, the kind of sword fighting and um, fighting griffins and things like that. I've been talking to the producers and kind of asking if we can do some sort of kind of fighting scenes. I was asking if they could introduce some more fighting stuff for the girls, because the girls haven't had any. Well, Katie and I haven't. And they, they promised that we're going to get some fighting in the next episode, so that's quite exciting. Lancelot, I don't believe I've ever met your like before. Well, anyway, if I should not return... Don't go, Lancelot. Please. For me, certainly, the legend is, is such a kind of an exciting story, and it's, it's one that we're, most of us are quite familiar with, um, and I think that will hook in a lot of people, perhaps of kind of more my age range as well. It's a brand new story based on a very old story, so, um, you know, it's got drama and intrigue and a bit of romance and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it, it, the exciting thing for me is that this, we know this legend, we know how this story ends up, but we've got no idea how we're going to get there and we can go anywhere we want with it, you know, and that's the exciting thing. I think that's the thing that will keep people watching. If you heard the power of life and death over Uther, would you kill him?